Welcome. This is 49E7 and the title is The Electric Field. Electric field is a bit of an abstract concept, so we'll take a little bit of time discussing it. Let's see what we say. The electric field can be considered as an aura that surrounds the charge and is a storehouse of energy. Um, it's an abstraction. It's real. It's there. There's clearly an influence. A charge clearly has an influence on the space around it. But it's not like a glowing thing, and it's it's. But it, by the same token, it's not like something that's completely made up. It's it's trying to describe something which is subtle. Uh, the electric field strength E can have units of newtons for every coulomb, or volts per meter. These might sound like completely different things, but if you look at them dimensionally, they come out to have the same dimensions. Uh, the electric field strength E at a point in space is numerically equal to the electric force that would be experienced by a unit positive charge at that location. So here I have a mother charge that's causing an electric field. And I'm imagining putting a, a little charge uh, in position and it will feel a force. And if that little charge has a one coulomb uh, um, positive value, then the force that it feels will numerically equal the electric field value. So we can say that our electric field vector is equal to our force vector divided by the charge. So, for instance, if I don't put a unit charge there, if I put 5 coulombs there, then the electric field at this point would be whatever force that 5 coulomb charge feels divided by 5. Or if I put 7 coulombs here, the electric field would be numerically equal to whatever force the 7 coulomb charge feels divided by 7. Now, here's, here's the issue. I don't need to have this little charge there to have the electric field. The electric field exists because of the positive charge. So actually I prefer to visualize the diagram underneath which is the mother charge and then what we have is we have a point in space. And we say recalling the equation for force we see that the electric field depends upon the mother charge's magnitude and the separation between the mother charge and the point of interest. An electric field is a vector. So if, if we recall this, what we said for force, we said the force is equal to Ke, the mother charge times the little charge over R squared times the unit vector and we just realized that we can get the electric field by dividing the force by the little charge, which means we divide by the little charge, which means that these guys go away. And so I get this equation down here where the electric field is equal to Ke Coulomb's constant times the mother charge over R squared times a unit vector charge which gives me the direction. Electric field is in the same direction as the force felt by a, a positive charge. Um, so can you see also it, the, the problem you run into now is that if force is equal to Ke big Q little q over R squared times R hat and field is equal to Ke big Q over uh, R squared times R hat. These are of course vector field and vector force. They're very similar equations. So you have to be really careful about that. It's really worthwhile spending some time with electric field and trying to make sure you can distinguish it between the field distinguished from the force. Um, so visualization becomes very important. And uh, let's see if I can, whoops, it is, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, didn't mean to do that again. 
So let's have a look at this. So uh, I will get there in the end. Yeah. Let's do a couple of examples. So what's the magnitude of an electric field at the point three meters from a six coulomb positive charge? So we have plus six. There's my mother charge. And it doesn't matter the directions. I'm just going to say three meters over there. And so I say, well, OK, let's remind ourselves F is equal to KE big Q little q over R squared. And E is equal to F over little q. So E is equal to KE big Q over R squared. If I'm talking in terms of magnitudes, I don't need to worry about the vector form of this. E is equal to, well, KE, we often leave it as KE, but every now and then I like to just put it in in number terms. This would be 9 times 10 to the 9. It's a huge number. And then K, uh, Q, Q in this case is 6. And then it's still an inverse square relationship. So that would be 3 squared. And this equals 6 times 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. 6 by 10 to the 9 newtons per coulomb. That's a massive number. The thing to realize is that 6 coulombs of charge is a massive amount of charge. One electron is 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. And you're getting how many of those by themselves to form six coulombs. It's a massive amount of charge. Um, the next thing is, let's do this in vector form. So what is the vector field, electric field at the point P if uh, a four coulomb positive charge feels an electric force of that? Okay, so here we have our mother charge. And then we have four positive and it feels a force, I'm going to put it like this, of 12i plus 16j minus 24k newtons. There's the force it feels. So I can say, oh, my vector electric field is equal to my vector force divided by the Q feeling the force. So this equals 12i plus 16j minus 24k divided by 4. So this equals 3i plus 4j minus 6k newtons for every coulomb. And there we have, we have that. So 3 plus 24 minus 6. And it's going to be newtons per coulomb. Yeah, I got the wrong units in my key. Newtons per coulomb, newtons per coulomb. Um, so one last thing I want to say about this. Two last things. One is that F is an inverse square relationship with R. And E is also inverse square with R. So if I double my separation, the electric field away, if I double my separation between the charge and the point of interest, if I double my separation, I get one quarter the electric field. If I triple my separation, I get one ninth the electric field. If I quadruple it, I get one sixteenth the electric field. Um, so visualize that. And then the second thing I would say is that there's E is equal to KEQ over R squared. Can you see there's two equations that relate to E? And it's important to know them both. 
if you think about it, these three equations are saying similar parts of the same thing. The, uh, um, you can visualize it like F is equal to KEQQ -Q over R squared and E is equal to F over Q, E is equal to KEQ -E over R squared. Can you see how they're basically forming a relationship with each other? And just make sure you're comfortable with the, the way that the three of these guys uh, fit together. Sometimes people know one and they're uncomfortable with the other. Oh, they may only think about trying to answer it in one way and not think about trying to answer it the other. So spend a bit of time with this. It's a bit abstract, but it's incredibly useful. Uh, we tend to think in terms of electric fields primarily earlier more fundamentally than we think of the forces that charges feel when they're put into electric fields. So there we have it.